Hello, Lemoyne de Gaston here with part two on my earth pigments or ochre pigments. Um, er, the first video and earlier today, I had mined clay, silt, and topsoil to be ground into pigment to be used as a paint. Um, some things I have found in doing this that differs from using a store-bought dirt pigment or earth pigment is that it takes far longer to grind. Um, I had intended in this video to show, demonstrate the grinding of the pigment on, with the muller and slab. Unfortunately it takes an immense long time to do immensely long time to do this. Um, this is Venetian red, which is made from a red clay that is mined outside of Venice. This is a store-bought earth pigment. Um, it takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes to grind, fine enough to be used as paint. Now, my first attempt on using stuff that I mined myself I use the gray clay which you can see is inconsistent the inconsistencies in the color and the way it came, it came on the wood that happens because the particles are too huge to be suspended successfully in the binding agent to produce a uniformed paint um, I had ground the clay for about the same amount of time as I do the store-bought pigment. And learning from that, I tried the topsoil, which I ground for about 35-40 minutes. This has a little bit better coverage. There are still inconsistencies in the coloration, but it's better. It's improving. The last one, the one that I'm going to demonstrate tonight, is going to be with the silt. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of the silt from the jar, place it on the muller, so you can see the difference as it is straight from the earth. It is relatively coarse. And when you grind on it with your muller, you can hear a lot of the dirt particles breaking down. Luckily, we've had rain off and on last week, so there's enough ground moisture in the dirt to grind it without adding water. As you can see, it makes a relatively nice paste with just the ground moisture that's in it. Um, I have a lot of trouble keeping the pigment in the roughed up area on the slab. A tool such as this is good to use to keep and you push your pigment back in and grind it. Um, different methods for using molars I've, I've come across. I've seen everything from placing your hand here and working your pigment to doing it this way. I personally prefer to take and do it this way using my forefinger and my thumb to, pr to put the downward pressure on my pigment. Um, I've, al I've also found that in lieu of having a tool such as this that a cheap plastic knife that you pick up at most fast food restaurants works just as well and it's a whole lot cheaper um, I took and I ground this is the same silt this is ground for a little over an hour Hopefully, 
it is fine enough to be suspended in the binding agent I am going to use uh, which by the way is gum Arabic as this is a test to see how well the pigment works whether or not I have it ground fi fine enough I will be using a store-bought gum Arabic if I were doing a piece for entry into a ANS competition I would go through and take the sap gum Arabic and process it into a binder and produce my bi uh, binding agent um, one thing that's indispensable are these little one ounce glasses for measuring out the amount of pigment it has teaspoons tablespoons and ounces on this particular one it also works very well for measuring liquids um, so now I'm going to take it and add it to this dish here which is a clamshell I have by the way this is about just a hair under one uh, teaspoon now I'm going to gum add my gum Arabic now the amount of gum Arabic that I'm going to add is I'm not sure I try to mix my paints to the consistency of acrylic paint that you would buy in the store that is how I'm you know I kind of eyeball it I'm not you know I can't say that I add this much gum Arabic to this much pigment um, so let's go ahead and add our gum Arabic then I will take a spoon handle I will mix my pigment into my gum Arabic keep the gum Arabic on one side of the shell and my powder so I can add powder if it's too thin it seems to be mixing a lot better and a lot smoother than my first two attempts on the thing now I have a piece of these like the other samples are popular uh, it was a wood used in period for painting on. Um, it has three coats of gesso on it. And I have pre-marked what I'm painting on it. And let's paint and see what we get. It appears to be going on a lot smoother and a lot more uniform than the clay or the topsoil but you can see that there are still large particles floating in the gum Arabic which means I should the next time I grind grind it for even longer this to to get this fully completed it's going to take more than one coat um, luckily gum Arabic dries fairly fast and I will be able not necessarily on this video to finish it but come back and overpaint my next coat of gum Arabic with the silt um, the particles are still too big to to be perfectly suspended in the binder as I previously stated but that gives you a rough idea of how it's coming out um, this is obviously going to take a lot more experimentation and a lot more work to get it right um, said we look at the silt and now 
let's move on and we're gonna go back and look at first the clay this is the raw clay in my container um, this breaks down it's fairly hard to break the clumps you got to use a lot of pressure to get it to break apart um, I will probably take these out and let them dry and get all the natural ground moisture out of them so I can grind them better by adding my own water and probably getting a better grind on the uh, pigment. In this jar we have the topsoil. The pro problem I found with the topsoil is you get contaminants such as leaves and twigs in your uh, topsoil which have to be sifted out as you grind or previously if you have a sand shake or something to sift out your uh, foreign contaminants. Also technically not a earth pigment but something worth noting. This past summer me and my lady and a few others cut down and uh, burnt yopon trees. This is the ash from the yopon tree. It grinds down rather quickly and rather smoothly. And I have made a sample, also using gum arabic on the poplar wood, of how it turned out. As you can tell, it is much smoother. You don't have near the amount of grains, and it covered in one coat. Um, the uh it's fun experience um i encourage people to harvest or mine dirt in their local area and clay or even cleachy rock if you have cleachy rock it is a fairly soft rock and breaks down fairly easy um and just this experiment with it and see what kinds of colors you can come up with i hope you've enjoyed these videos i know i have enjoyed making them thank you very much